everyone. Welcome to Playwright, a podcast about creating and sharing new ways to play. This is our audio game jam where we pitch back and forth brand new video game ideas. My name is Ryan Heyman, although uh, you can call me H on this show. I'm Ryan Quintel. You can call me Q. Today, I sent you a picture just as like a little joke that I thought yeah. we would kind of get a good laugh from, but it sounds like it really kind of shook you to your core. It really took my universe that I understood. <laughs> let's let's first say what the picture is. And the okay. picture is, you sent me, uh, apparently what you told me is the ending of the Lost Levels in Super Mario All-Stars, um, which right. is kind of a compilation disc. And it has Peach, not just kissing Luigi's cheek, but there is lipstick all over <laughs> Luigi's face, his nose, and definitely on his, at least right next to his lips, if not on his lips. Uh-huh. <laughs> so there's also some some stuff that deals with this maybe at the end of Super Mario Odyssey. I don't want to spoil that for anybody. <laughs> but is Peach the whole time really just interested in Luigi? And Mario is the the brother who is kind of, she's going through. Like she she wants to be with Mario to kind of get Luigi her number. It depends on which brother you play through the Lost Levels with, which ending you get. If you play through as Luigi, you get the Luigi ending. If you play through as Mario, you get the Mario ending. But I think it, it kind of reinforces the fact that Peach doesn't really seem fully sold on Mario. Like, he's he's useful because he keeps saving her, but I don't think there's been that much to insinuate a romantic connection between the two of them. So, uh, yeah, it's just kind of fun to see uh, her and Luigi hook up. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And it's... <laughs> Luigi looks completely love drunk on the whole thing. And <laughs> the, the other thing about it is you sent it to me with no context other than two exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> so I was uh, I was left just as shocked as you at least seem to be via text. <laughs> Why don't you introduce us to something today, a brand new idea out of your own head? Well, my pitch for you this week is pretty simple and straightforward, but I hope we can have a lot of fun with it. Are you familiar with the game Gang Beasts? Yes, love that one. In Gang Beasts, you're kind of this, uh, for people who don't know, the physics-y object type of jelly wiggly person. And you're, you're kind of climbing up all these obstacles and competing with people. I want to take the popular trend of very large-scale online multiplayer games and create a 30 to 50 person online gang beasts that actually are escape scenes. So some of my favorite simultaneously frustrating points in, say, the Uncharted games are the end where usually everything's falling apart around you and you're trying to escape from a precarious (laughs) situation. And I thought it might be fun because so often in those uh, levels or sequences, You bump into something slightly, you just barely miss a jump and you die. And of course, it's very uneventful because you just start from five seconds before that and keep going. I want to do a multiplayer match where 50 people start all as these wiggly wobbly gang beast like creatures (laughs) and they can bump into each other in the environment and they all kind of jump slightly awkwardly um, and can collide in the air. And just like your PUBG, the numbers just keep getting more and more narrowed (laughs) down until the people that uh, manage to not bump into anybody or get hurt uh, or slow down and actually escape are the winners. Very cool. I like this a lot. Let's go ahead and start the clock and see where we can get on this one. What this makes me think of immediately is uh, I like the chaos of something like Speedrunners or Runbo, both those kind of racing games that play out like 2d platformers in a way yeah uh, that you're just encouraged to find your way around this procedurally generated course full of obstacles and stuff and you can get in each other's ways and stomp in each other's heads and trip each other up and lay traps and then also i like that this is framed in a like an escape situation like that's such a creative spin on the premise you know, it's not really a race, like you're just trying to survive, essentially. It <laughs> reminds me of uh, Disaster Report on uh, PlayStation 2, and that series has gone on, uh, all about surviving, you know, natural disasters and building collapses and stuff like that. So that could be a really fun way to frame this one. <laughs> yeah, if it was designed a little bit like you pitched, if it's almost an endless runner type of situation, you 
you can kind of have the level constantly collapsing and falling down uh, mm-hmm. until one person is left, right? And and then so you actually do manage to weed out all uh, fifty people. But I I have been caught by this feeling that have you been playing or heard of hq no i don't know that one that sounds like (laughs) a game just made for the two of us (laughs) (laughs) it does so hq is a trivia game that literally at the beginning of its 12 questions 350 plus thousand people sign on twice a day at noon and 6 p.m pacific And with every question, the number gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then eventually they have like a thousand dollars that they give away each time. And if there are a hundred people left, everybody gets, you know, 10 bucks or you can have it so that one person is left and and gets a thousand. So the idea of there could be multiple people who are able to win like at the end of the level, I think is equally compelling as to the level is just all constantly falling apart until finally the last competitor falls and it's just one triumphant little wiggly man or or woman standing there. (laughs) And it'd be fun if you could change the shape of your little wiggly person. I don't know if that would upset the balance of everything, but maybe somebody really tall and lanky would be a little bit slower, difficult to control, but would have that extra reach on the jumps. Maybe somebody kind of short and stout would be a little bit more agile, but... uh, Or your low center of gravity too. Couldn't form those uh, human ladders to get up to higher places. I kind of like that. Uh, I do like an element of working together, though. Like, if this was maybe not a free-for-all thing, I mean, there could be free-for-all modes, but if there was, like, a team-based mode where there's four teams of people, each with, I don't know, however many, like, 25 competitors, or, you know, maybe it's less in, in this mode. Maybe it's just, like, 10 each for a total of 40. And they have to, like, try to work together while pushing off the people that aren't on their team. Oh, give you that's a little really bit cool. more to think about just outside of your own self. <laughs> yes. So you could even have a team mode where there's three different color type of people and you're like, oh, we're red team's going to push off blue team and yellow team. Yellow team's going to push off the other two. You know, so there are kind of packs because you can in PUBG, you know, go into a pack of four people and technically mm-hmm. be in a 25 team match. <laughs> I like what you said about having to help people. What if you did something where maybe as some somebody you don't just necessarily fall if you almost make a jump, but you do kind of grip onto a ledge. And if somebody mm-hmm. pulls you up or gives you a hand up, <laughs> Maybe it gives them a speed boost, right? A mm. mechanic to okay. uh, to maybe get to the front of the pack or um, maybe their next jump, a random power up or their next jump is a super good, reliable long jump that they get beyond everybody else. Uh, mm. And they can save that and use it like, oh, I know the pattern of this level. There's a big jump coming up and I'm going to want to have helped somebody out previously in order to uh, to do it. I feel like part of the charm of this idea comes from the squishy controls. And so changing the way that it controls fundamentally would be a bit tenuous. But maybe maybe your character is, uh, there are certain concessions made to the control scheme to where you can't help but help people every once in a while. Like if you jump to a ledge and you just barely make it, then you hang on off the edge. And obviously, if you just barely made it, that means that it's pretty far away and somebody else might be in an even worse spot. And so he takes a while to pull himself up. But as you're doing that, then anyone can grab onto your body and climb up on top of you. So you are helping them by the uh, nature of being an extra physics object in this (laughs) world for a short amount of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or anybody that falls into like a river or something would sort of be like a little bridge. (laughs) That they can hop on and the little dead body to hop over the river. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. I even like the idea of bumping into someone to potentially cause a piece of the environment to fall or collapse mm-hmm. to sort of like human shield your way through some of the obstacles that <laughs> kind of allows for a pretty aggressive style of play and then the whole thing feels like between the dead bodies in the river this is getting grim but the the physics <laughs> objects that, that people are climbing on and jumping on and and rolling over it would feel a lot more like the video footage you always see news networks play of the beginning of American Black Friday where people <laughs> <laughs> people are all just want a stupid pokemon thing so much so they they trample each other i also want to see levels thinking about scenarios that we can put these little like bean people in 
like a collapsing city, some sort of hit by a natural disaster is a fun, not a fun scenario, but it would be fun to see little cartoon characters get caught up in. But also maybe like trying to avoid traps in this like Indiana Jones kind of temple. And so there's there's pits and there's swinging clubs and there's uh, spikes and stuff just all over the place and pressure plates. <laughs> I like the idea of all those action movie cliches. I mean, why not let's set a level in space or on asteroids yeah, yeah. or something. So <laughs> you've got low gravity stuff happening and you've, you know, people are, are able to leap super high into the air, but you're, you're going through essentially an asteroid field while, while, <laughs> you know, something a comet is burning up behind you. Or maybe you're in a, uh, in a spaceship, like a big space station and, the lights are flickering, so you have low visibility with yeah. all of these people running, and then there's like a xenomorph after you. <laughs> so one of my favorite interactions this past year with video games was playing the raid in Destiny 2, hmm. uh, a game which I have fallen off of very hard, by the way. <laughs> but, yeah, you're uh, not alone there. <laughs> so um, there is a part in the raid where there's a mechanic where a couple people have to sort of grab a ball or an object, and all of the players on the team have to run and go through rings essentially like a tic-tac-toe grid of rings Mm -hmm. and if anybody goes through if any two people go through the same ring it sort of doesn't give credit to the team or it doesn't count or it's bad in some way Mm. i don't even remember but i do like the idea of you know if you have such a large number of people just there are some pathways some bridges that can't support uh (laughs) you know a certain number of people so if too many people take the same way uh, it's going to collapse, uh, whether, whether uh, that's, yeah, that's clever. get off. You have to kind of like enough. wait for the people to leave the bridge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, okay, well I can't be the 20th person on this bridge, but I, I can, I can wait till, you know, some of the people are finished going over it and then I can yeah. go over it. And everybody wants to get over it as, as quickly as they can as well. It reminds me of the end of it's a mad, 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 mad world where everyone's trying to get off the uh, fire escape because just the entire crowd is stuck up there. And so the, the big fire truck with that uh, ladder comes around and says, I can take like three of you at a time. And they all hop on and they end up breaking the thing. <laughs> and, and that could also create situations, too, where like you have, especially towards the beginning of a level, mm-hmm. just small doors. And all these people have to just squish each other yeah. through the doors. Every every new person trying to you need the momentum of multiple people trying to punch through this thing before you can kind of get out the other side. (laughs) Or maybe there's uh, like cars that you can, uh, that you can take. They're uh, driven by the AI, but you can fit, you know, however many people, maybe 10 people in each car. And (laughs) as it fills to capacity, then the doors close. But if that's the last car, then you can still like jump on top and hang on and try to not get shaken off on the ride to get where you need to go. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Yeah, you can have, I mean, the idea of people being able to simply jump and grab um, mm-hmm. when everything's a physics object could be really fun because you could, you could see, depending on the physics object, if it's small enough, maybe getting like a, a makeshift weapon or picking up a, you know, a beam, even if it's slow to just block a certain passageway for people or make it much slower for them yeah i like that well we're out of time on this one this one is one of my favorites though i'm curious what are you going to call it i was going pretty plain jane on it uh but i was thinking of escape gang (laughs) (laughs) that that felt right to me yeah especially if it was a part of the gang beast extended universe (laughs) yeah let's do it (laughs) going over to my game now I don't know how I feel about this. We'll see what we can get out of it. So there's this game on Steam you've probably seen videos of called Comedy Night. Do you know that one? I have heard of it. Is it like a stand-up comedy simulator? Yeah, essentially. They give you, uh, they allow you to kind of create a little person for this, you know, 3D stand-up comedy room. And uh, essentially, you know, you just kind of get up to the mic and uh, do your best set. And there's no mechanics other than the the crowds can boo or they can heckle you or they can applaud. Um, but it's just a bunch of people, almost like a almost like a chat room where the mics are always on, but it's like an honor system. Like since it does create this kind of edifice of a actual like comedy club, people come to uh, hear these amateur comedians and uh, yeah, just see how how good they are. Uh, so anyways, it's been kind of fun to watch a few videos of that on on 
YouTube. I haven't gone into the game myself to uh, give it a shot just yet, but you know, it'd be fun. It's a good place to tr- test out some new material without putting your real face on the line there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, what I was thinking is a similar premise, but for rap battles. So you've got your beats that play in the background and the people just kind of like rap along with it. And the crowds are, you know, involved to whatever extent they are in real rap battles. They can react to the the punchlines and they can uh, determine who won the rap battle at the very end of it. So, yeah, well, we'll see. Where can we go with this? <laughs> That's a really good idea. I I love the mechanic of essentially giving a crowd the control that they would really have. Like, you know, the mm-hmm. moments during, by the way, enter two white guys talking about rap battles. Fine. <laughs> here, we, here we go. But there are moments where, at least fictionally, uh, from what I've seen, <laughs> I've not attended a real rap battle, uh, <laughs> where you hear the crowd, you know, react to a really great line in a kind of like, oh, like, I can't believe so-and-so went there. Yeah. And the ability to have those kind of crowd emotes um, and potentially unlocking more emotes that you can <laughs> react to as a crowd. Because I, fi- I find like mixed crowd reactions are always some sometimes the most fun. Yeah. But having that stuff and then literally you are creating a really intricate online poll kind of on the back mm-hmm. end of this, right? Where people are, maybe you can, uh, you know, applaud a little, um, you know, a regular amount or a lot um, or you can boo. And when you choose one of those things at the end, you're actually garnering pretty interesting data as to who is a legitimately good rapper or at least entertaining. I was thinking about mechanically how this would work. Whatever is being played on the server would be like, you know, a measure or two behind what the person is actually hearing, the one who is doing the rapping. And so it would have time to adjust for any delay or latency. And so it would sound like they are hitting the beat the way that they hear it on their end of the microphone, which is uh, not always the case. If we were to do a rap battle over Skype, then it would be a little bit a little bit off. That's not <laughs> right. an invitation, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd have to account for whatever that, that audio delay is and then yeah. play the person so that they can kind of monitor their own audio and it's actually feeding into the crowd, uh, you know, on that half second or second or two yeah. delay that has to happen, which is, it's definitely tough to coordinate, but it... You know, if they're doing the stand-up comedy sets, so much of the laughter and stuff is is got to be based on timing. Another mode that could possibly go into this is like a suggestions mode where during the rap battle, people can press like buttons that correspond with like almost like a set of emojis. You can see understanding it's all scored by the crowd. So, you know, there's no official scoring mechanics, but the people would be rated higher if they incorporated the suggestion into their rap. So they can press a button for like a flamingo and then the rapper has to find some way to like tie the rap into a flamingo. It's uh, uh, inspired by a really cool freestyle that Eminem did called First Words, where he just had somebody else kind of like pitching him words and he would uh, kind of, you know, take off on on those over time. And, And it's a really cool verse. It demonstrate some pretty significant talent on his end uh, being that quick on his feet to be able to incorporate these wild suggestions. What if you extended that out to and almost did the Iron Chef version of that (laughs) where let's say the rap battle is not as opposed to two long freestyle raps you kind of have um, you know, quick little 10, 15 second snippets for each person, mm-hmm. some kind of manageable amount. And, you know, in between the crowd is both uh, cheering a certain amount and scoring each player, um, but also kind of voting on the next suggested theme. <laughs> the crowd is kind of controlling the content, right, in a way, and the rappers mm-hmm. are, are reacting to it. But you you almost get this micro score. So as opposed to at the end, you know, who gets the most applause, it's like who got the most applause total over each round. Yeah, or if it is kind of like a suggestion type round, if it would flash up on screen two different pictures and then the crowd had five seconds or whatever to choose between the two of them. And then after a couple of lines, it would it would give you a prompt, the entire crowd a prompt like, you know, did they do a good line there? And 
everyone would get to vote thumbs up or thumbs down. And then based on the majority, it would get, uh, you know, points would be awarded to the person who uh, is rapping at the moment. I love the idea of being able to bring in licensed samples in some of this stuff. <laughs> so much of my favorite, uh, you know, early 90s uh, rap was... Mm -hmm had great 1970s and 80s mm. samples behind it. So yeah. to, you know, bring back in things like uh, Juicy Fruit and, and all those great uh, samples could be <laughs> really fun and, and make it feel kind of inspired by the history of hip hop. Yeah, this would probably have to come with a pretty robust set of, uh, of instrumental tracks of all different BPMs as well. You know, if people wanted to easier slower tracks or more difficult quick tracks that made them really think on their feet but uh, i'm thinking it would get in a very uh, very tricky legal spot if you were just using like snoop dog tracks uh to rap over but um yeah i'd imagine that there's a lot of really talented musicians out there who would love to uh, get a gig just producing rap beats for this thing so what you're saying is we're gonna have to get harmonics to uh, drop the <laughs> board game game and since come back to the virtual realm so what if one one final thing I want to take uh, what you had mentioned about the multiple BPM and what if we map that back onto as opposed to or it may be in addition to voting with these kind of symbols or emojis or themes <laughs> mm -hmm. between each 10 or 20 second thing, the music can kind of transition from one style of beat to the next. And and you're really kind of seeing, you know, the diversity of of the rappers or the the artists here who are kind of changing their beats and their patterns and maybe you have specific hangout rooms where you're like this is the chill room and it's kind of low bpm stuff and it's all about that kind of smooth flow uh, as opposed to the more kind of aggressive quick uh, exciting matches that could happen you would have to have some level of matchmaking to make sure that people go up against others of a roughly equal skill level so you don't have like the really good rappers going up against the people who are just messing around, seeing how the software works in the first place, because then all of the battles would be really one-sided. Or if you could have a way for uh, some of the like most popular people to challenge each other or you know set up private matches with op open spectatorship, uh, I could see this kind of thing being a hit on Twitch. Oh, totally. And this game could potentially result in one of the best pieces of content ever, which is the entire Kane and Rince crew all rap battling <laughs> each other. I would love to hear that. Well, I got onto the crew in the first place because I did a rap song about <laughs> oh. the games that they had covered in that volume. So You've already got the skills. Josh Garrity could be throwing some some wicked beats. Yeah, he's he's in the meantime, he's secretly throwing down. <laughs> I also like these kind of games, the same thing with the comedy game, these kind of games can allow somebody to express a side of themselves, uh, yeah. you know, in a, in, a, in a state where maybe they wouldn't be comfortable doing it uh, for whatever reason, whether it's literally their physical appearance or, you know, mm. just, you know, where they're at in life. If they, they don't feel confident to go out and, you know, do these things in person, how do how do I even find a rap battle in real life? I, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> to... To kind of mainstream that sort of thing. Let's go out to the theater. I'm going to go into San Francisco and just kind of ask around for uh, rap battles. Um, uh, friends, have you seen a, <laughs> a rap battle anywhere in the neighborhood? I am looking for the sickest beats. <laughs> I'm looking to throw down with someone. <laughs> Please. Verbally. Um, yeah, so I just love the idea of being able to, you know, create a space where anybody can do that and uh you know you might find some of the next great artists on that same same thing with the comedy one you know what i'm a lot more confident about this now that we talked about it than before <laughs> that's all good. the time we have on that one uh i don't have a uh, wonderful name for this one yet but i guess i will tentatively for now call this one great mile <laughs> nice of course so i hope that's where it finds everyone all right, we have one pitch left today. This comes from the community. Uh, you can get in touch with us, playwrightcast at gmail.com or at our website, playwrightcast.com slash pitch, where you can uh, suggest your own video games to us, just like both Q and myself have done throughout the show today. And we will read them on the show. We will discuss them. We will try to find the 
hidden heart and soul within those projects and turn them into something viable. We do our very best and we at least come away with something entertaining at the end of the day. Well, I think a couple weeks ago, people heard us really work through that. Was it Wiggle and Joe? Well, it, Wiggle and Joe was, uh, was last week, and that one was, uh, I, I think that one was a pretty good ride we had. But a couple weeks ago, we had a Kirby Billiards game that oh, really man. threw us for a loop. <laughs> we're, not go, we're not sliding into the holidays here, folks. We're bringing you the best content <laughs> we've ever brought you. That's right. That one came from uh, David Vandergreent, and uh, he comes back with another pitch today. He sent all three of these in the same email, so I'm hoping the second one gives us that same level of difficulty that we enjoyed in the Kirby Billiards one. <laughs> that was great. David says, a fishing game where you play as the lure and have to entice or annoy fish into eating you. And we will begin. That's cool. That's fun. There's something about fishing video games that always looks fun when you watch trailers for them. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the those images of the giant bass like getting pulled out of the water and it's flopping all around and you're trying to, you know, reel in your virtual fishing line and and, and take it in and I feel like actually playing them can't be and I'm not a huge fishing game expert or anything but that can't be representative of the whole experience but maybe if you were a little bit more in that environment if you were some sort of like a sentient bait and hook you can uh, have a little bit more interactivity one of the things that I think places like double fine just has a great art style that I feel like would match this kind of thing where I almost mm-hmm. want to anthropomorphize the bait Mm -hmm. because a lot of bait when i was growing up and i would go fishing with my grandfather we would always use live bait which number one was tough as a little kid because you're like i gotta stick a hook in this tiny fish so that a bigger fish can eat it it was it was a little traumatizing (laughs) the idea of if you kind of take the toy story angle of it which is you know all toys want to do is be played with so all bait (laughs) wants to do is be caught then you can kind of create a very sort of uh, dare i even say promiscuous feeling bait (laughs) who is kind of you know trying to wiggle in the right way and and kind of swim in a in a pattern that they think is going to attract the fish or potentially the opposite of or purposely like annoy a fish and pester it Mm -hmm. until it's had enough of you all right so here's a pitch what if okay we take some inspiration from ridiculous fishing the wonderful mobile game put out by vlambeer in which you play essentially a similar thing it's a a side-scrolling fishing game where you can move the hook back and forth and you try to avoid fishes on the way down to the the floor of the ocean And then once you hit the floor or once you hit a fish, then the fisherman starts reeling it back up. And your job on the way up is to uh, run into as many fishes as possible. And then once you hit the surface of the water, all the fish are flung into the air and the fisherman has to shoot them all with shotguns, which is a silly game, but a lot of fun. If you've not played it, it's uh, available on uh, iOS and Android, I assume. I played it on iOS. I don't know if it's on Android. I assume it is, though. Land beer is usually cool about that kind of thing. Let's take a similar approach, but it's a 3D type game where uh, you are kind of behind the bait and you're being propelled forward through these various undersea environments. And your job is to kind of avoid rocks, just get through this space. And the deeper you get, then the more kind of like crazy sea creatures you get. And it starts off just like a straight fishing game with just some you know neat looking fish that are modeled after real fish and then after a while it starts to get like you start to find the undersea fish communities like little cities and towns that they make kind of like spongebob style but they all still look like realistic fish but you know they might be all just realistic fish sitting around today uh at a saloon in a old west type town (laughs) just these realistic fish drinking at the bar and something and and so at that point it's your job to kind of like snake your way into these various scenarios and try to find the most valuable fish and hook that and pull it all the way back up and the deeper you go the longer you have to keep it on the line as it tries to struggle away as you're kind of zooming backwards towards the camera and this this fish is struggling, taking up the whole screen, trying to struggle to get free. Nah, I can see that being a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, and as you kind of go from town to town, 
Maybe mm-hmm. there's, you know, different ways to attract these fish. It's funny when you start describing it, I went to, uh, a, you know, a game that we reference a lot on this show is Spore uh, mm-hmm. in some way, shape or form. And I specifically love the idea of being a bait that gets caught. And if you're you're a particular type of fish who's on the hook, now you're just kind of in control of that fish. And you can, you know, <laughs> attempt to lure an oh, even yeah, bigger yeah. fish onto the line. <laughs> so maybe you could do that as you go from place to place, uh, deeper and deeper in the ocean um, and encounter all these weird towns. I, I love the idea that they're realistic looking fish and they're like sitting in chairs and stuff. <laughs> just kind of like very, you know, like stiff. I just played just this past weekend, What Remains of Edith Finch. Mm. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it was a really amazing game. And uh, one of the things I like the most is the cannery part yeah, of the of game. Course. <laughs> <laughs> Where specifically, not not just because of the stuff that happens during it, but the but kind because of... because it's the ending. Yeah, right. But the stiffness of the fish feel felt very good to me. Mm, you know, yeah. it felt like I was handling a pretty, you know, a cold out of water fish. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like the idea of these fish kind of embodying more that kind of characteristic than the sort of elegant, you know, moving through the water creatures that you typically see portrayed, especially in games. It's very silly. Uh, there's one thing that I am deeply primally afraid of, and that is like really deep undersea fish for some reason. Like, oh, I love looking at them in pictures and stuff, but whenever I think about like, what would it be like to swim down that deep? I get like super like uneasy, <laughs> like in my, the pit of my stomach kind of drops out because you're in this space that's almost entirely dark because you're so far away from the surface and you've just got these like monsters swimming around you and you've got the little ones, the, like the angler fish with their giant nasty alien teeth. And then you've got like enormous squids going by. And so I can imagine a level like that where you have like a little light attached to your lure like once you get down that deep could be like legitimately terrifying (laughs) yeah i mean that classic hollywood shot right of you're kind of moving along something that you think is like a cliffside or coral Mm -hmm. or something and then all of a sudden an eyeball opens right um (laughs) that that in and of itself it's weird that we share this weird fear <laughs> that we're discovering here. But there is, I mean, when you get deep enough into the ocean, these things start to look alien. And mm-hmm. it, admittedly, humans haven't been to the deepest parts of the ocean. So this game could get really abstract and weird yeah, yeah. as you continue <laughs> to to go down and down and down. Now that you mentioned like giant eyes opening, it would be kind of fun to, towards the end of the game, be able to hook a whale I mean, as much as I don't support that in real life, I think <laughs> right. for the purpose of the game, that could be kind of cool. Or like hook like a uh, public domain version of Aquaman or Poseidon or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And maybe there's different in like the uh, in Star Wars video games, there's always the Hoth level that you eventually play. And uh, the the Hoth level in, usually includes entangling an AT-AT mm-hmm. by wrapping a cord around oh, its legs. Yeah, yeah. So I like the idea of the lure uh, being able to kind of have some agency over the direction and then maybe different fish have to be wrapped in certain ways uh, <laughs> to, to capture them properly. Right, the really and big really, ones. Yeah, secure secure them with just a mile and a half of fishing line. That's clever because you got the string behind you. So, you know, I was originally picturing like that is you're defining your route backwards. Kind of like in uh, SteamWorld Dig, you choose which blocks you, you mine. And yeah. uh, that kind of sets your uh, platforming challenges for the way back up to the surface. Uh, but similarly, if you were choosing like where to go in this 3d open space then that is essentially the return journey follows that exact same kind of string trail but i i do also like this alternate hypothesis where you can use this string as like an entanglement device or as a way to i'm going to say prepare fish before you hook them like if you were to wrap yourself around a fish's tail or around an octopus's tentacles or something yeah. Before you hook it. <laughs> yeah, you could get away better or they, yeah, they, I yeah, mean, they'd right. have a harder time getting away. Right. 
Yeah, but at the same time, you're risking running into things a little bit more and losing points or something like that. But uh, yeah, that this is fertile ground and I want to explore this more, but we're out of time. We have to think of a name for this one because uh, David doesn't come with anything. This might be a little bit naughty, but I want to suggest the master bait. Oh, God. It's the holidays, H. I'm going to let you have it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ah, yes, in the spirit of the holidays. In the spirit of the holidays, play master bait. <laughs> that does it for us today. If you would also like to submit a pitch just like David's there, we've told you where to contact us earlier. That is playwrightcast at gmail.com or our website, playwrightcast.com. Get in touch with us on Twitter at playwrightcast. Uh, we'd also encourage you to Tell all of your friends about the show or uh, rate us on iTunes. We are still trying to get our names out there. And we know a lot of possibly disappointed Cool Games Inc. fans that are missing something in their lives now and would, would really appreciate the chance to uh, maybe engage with something similar. So <laughs> we're here. We just want to kind of get our names out there a little bit more and uh, get some more voices writing in and uh, ears consuming what we make. <laughs> I wanted to call out specifically, we got, I don't know how long ago it was, but Darkfish Days on mm -hmm. Apple Podcast wrote in a review uh, and it's a quite, it's a long review. It's a beautiful review. Thank you so much. But I want to read the end here. Uh, they said, all, all that said, here she said, all that said, it's a great listen. It's already produced many game pitches that I keep thinking about and wish I could play it right now. So thank you so much for people leaving reviews and sharing the show. It really is the best way oh, to help us out. Give, give the gift of playwright this year. <laughs> that's right. For for Hanukkah or Hanukkah, if you will, and and Christmas as well. Yeah. I like Hanukkah because there are multiple correct ways to spell it. Like I yeah. feel like it's just not bothered by that kind of thing. It's like, <laughs> it's, hey, you want to put a C in front of it? Cool. Not, I'm okay with that too. Yeah, it's it's the it's literally just about the spirit of the thing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, H, I want to make sure that we thank our good, mm. good friend, Proto Dome, for giving us the track Hello World, giving us, letting us use it for our theme song right. uh, off, uh, off his album, Blue Noise. It's really good and would make a perfect stocking stuffer for somebody who's into chiptunes. <laughs> That's right. Just slip that MP3 right in there. Just get it in there. Get it on a thumb drive or, a, yeah. or, 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 or hide it on your friend's laptop and see if they can find it. Let's take it out today with a final little pitch. Um, what do you have for us today, Q, to uh, just give us something to think about as the, the month draws to a close? I'm going to go licensed on you this week. I want a Spider-Man universe type of game mm -hmm. where you play as the symbiote that came from outer space uh. Uh, that combines to make Venom and Carnage. But this symbiote you can kind of combine with anyone, including oh. animals and everyone, and give any weird thing Spider-Man-like powers and just kind of play around in the world like that. Why did you not save this for next week? <laughs> this, this, is like, this is like Mark key worthy right here i, I want know. to be a symbiote cow <laughs> well hey <laughs> but... it's inspiration so if it inspires <laughs> you i i expect you to be here in seven days <laughs> cool well uh those of you on twitter tell us what you would like to merge with as a symbiote <laughs> we would love to hear it i want to hear some crazy ideas symbiote sea sponge how about that'd be fun <laughs> i love it <laughs> all right we'll see you next week bye <laughs> Thank you.